All right, welcome back to the garage welding series, part two, flex core welding. Start talking about how to actually use the machine here. And what I'm showing here is uh, the angle that we want to drag at, and here's a good picture of it. We're going to have a 45 degree work angle and 10 to 15 degrees of tilt in the direction that you're welding. All right, so just like I'm showing here, 45 degree angle, if you're doing a fillet weld like this, which is a real common uh, well to do. So not up here, not down there, right in the middle, 45 degrees. Half an inch of stick out, which is how far away you are from the metal, and then you want to angle. What if you're doing a butt weld or a groove weld like this? This one will be 90 degrees. So a little, little more straight down than I have it here, but you don't want to weld straight down into that groove if you're doing it like this. But still have that. So what do I do with my hands? Uh, you can do anything you want with your hands as long as it's comfortable, as long as you can move with, with your weld too. So uh, you do want to have three points of contact, right? So you got your two feet on the floor and then you want to have your hand or your elbow or something on the table while you weld. You want to be able to move with it like I am right there. I'm sliding with, I'm not rolling my wrist and changing the work angle. I'm, uh, I'm just sliding with it. So that's so what it looks like from the front side. See, I got my my uh, elbow on the table there I got my hand on my gun hand and I'm just moving slow and steady you can see my uh, travel angle I'm tilted 10 to 15 degrees over to the direction that I'm welding at so that's very important because uh, this process flux core process makes slag so that covers the weld and if you don't uh, tilt that the gun in the direction that you're traveling and point the tip back to where you came from and then the arc is not and the gas that is generated is not going to help push that slag back up and over your weld to protect it it's going to get trapped underneath or it's going to go ahead of you and you're going to weld over it so you definitely don't want to weld straight down you want to have that tilt you can see that tilt right there uh, as I'm moving along on my weld I'm also looking at the puddle to see the shape of my weld. That's how you know how big your weld is coming out. You don't look ahead or anywhere else. You're looking at the, the liquid part of your metal at the time. Uh, you can use a wire wheel like I am to clean the slag off, or you can use a wire brush. The file works real well. It depends, you know, depends what you have or how much in a rush you are or where you're at. Having to do a lot of start and stops here because of the duty cycle on this machine. And also the, I guess the break that circuit I'm working on. If I weld too long, it, it shuts off even though it's a 20 amp breaker. Uh, possibly because of other things that are connected to it. So but I decided to move to the backyard. It was a lot cooler that day. And uh, also the ventilation. You know, this, this process, flux core makes a lot of... Uh, smoke and fumes and I wanted to make sure that it, it wasn't getting trapped in the garage or going inside the house or anything like that. So that's what it looked like. See the little light splatter on the piece but that, that comes off real easy with the with the grinder. Another thing to note here is uh, you might be thinking where are my MIG pliers? Don't need it with flux core really because like I did right there you can just break off the wire. It's brittle enough that if you just break it off if it's bent on the end or something you just uh, snap it at the contact tip, give the trigger a little push, and it'll maybe stick out about half an inch, and then you can start welding. Sometimes it gets stuck there at the end. So this is a closer up view of what it looks like at the weld site. So you got to see the body position, and now you, know, you can see the stick out. You can see the rod the wire manipulation. Uh, right here, I'm just doing a cursive E. You guys don't know how to write cursive, that's, that's exactly what I'm doing. Slow and steady, I'm watching a puddle. And I, I should have about half an inch of stick out. That means how far away is that contact tip from the metal. Um, I'm a little short there, right? I'm used to a shorter stick out, but that's it's still working for me, so I'm, I'm stuck with it. But yeah, around half an inch. So you, you can be pretty far away from the metal. That's what it comes out on. I've got the machine set on eight and a half. 
on the voltage setting and eight and a half on the wire feed speed and that's the way it's coming out for eighth inch steel right there so when you do a stop and start you want to start ahead of where you want to start and then go back to where you left off and then well and then continue well and that way the your wells will blend together so again this is the cursive e method and it's just what i'm used to it's kind of my my go-to but other other people might have a, a different favorite uh, manipulation manufacturer in the instructions recommends that you straight drag you don't do anything just pull the trigger and go left, you know, left to right right to left whatever you're doing um, but you can do a few other things and the reason why they don't want you to is well one you get a lot better penetration if you're not manipulating but the weld will be smaller and if you want to weld the size of what I'm making there for whatever reason or you're just going for aesthetics then then you need to manipulate but you can just straight drag it and I'll show that in just a minute um, but remember you do gotta tilt and, and um, to make sure the slag doesn't get trucked under and that's why they don't want that's another reason they don't want you to um, move the, the wire because you could trap slag so here's the stop and start so again now when you're when you are doing your rod manipulation which could be the cursive E it could be a C shape you could go just up and down like zigzag I'll do a, a whip back and forth also here in a minute you want to make sure that you're not going too far ahead or doing too drastic of a motion that causes you to trap slag in your weld because that'll cause porosity which could cause cracking and uh, weaknesses in your weld so we gotta make sure that you know, take it easy with the rod uh, wire manipulation don't go too drastic uh, or you could end up making your weld weaker than you know, we're trying to make it stronger than that. So not bad. It, this uh, at those settings, this machine was making a pretty nice weld profile there. Pretty decent size of you know around quarter inch. That's what I was going for. Let's try some uh, uphill and downhill here. Uh, I was kind of out of frame, but I'm coming downhill now, and uh, I'm going uh, like a upside down C shape or a half moon. Kind of just left to right, but with an arch to it. That's the way I do top down. All right, and then I'll do bottom up, which uh, they're about the same. Uh, get a little, a little more heat, a little better penetration when you're going bottom up. But you, you can get it a decent weld going top down or uh, bottom up, just the same. Uh, for me, anyway. The, my uh, downhills, my top downs always look a little cleaner. That's just the way the way it does for me. But you can make decent welds in, in both directions. So here's a bottom up. It's more like a Y shape now. It's pretty much the opposite of what I did. You want to tilt that. Tilt your contact tip. Should be tilted up slightly. And gravity will take your slag back behind you. So you're not not a lot of worry about trapping slag on your weld there. So again, this is this is one of the show we talked a lot about the machine already and flexible wire, but this is how do I actually do it? Put it and sticking the actual metal together. So there's my top down, bottom up. I left a little gap in the middle, but so this is quarter inch material. I picked the the machine up to almost the highest setting, I believe it's at 9 and 9 on the, on the dial. 9 voltage, there's a straight drag, not doing anything but just going slow and steady. Any movement you see is just me shaking. So my breaker tripped right there, so that was as far as I could go with uh, straight dragging at almost the highest setting on this circuit. And uh, my obviously my grinder didn't work in the power thing. So I'm going to come back and do a whip back and forth motion now. Just back and forth, back and forth. Kind of go ahead and you, you lay a little bit of weld down, but you come back and you weld over it. And it makes a pretty decent weld profile also.
we just stop and starts, make sure you always clean your slag off where you're going to start. You don't have to clean the whole weld, but at least where you're going to weld over again, which is that little fingernail looking section there on the end. You know, make sure you clean that off a little bit. Flux core does all right. It's not too picky about metal cleanliness, but it's always a good idea with wire feet to prep your metal. I wire wheeled all these pieces. You can grind them. Uh, and then, like I said, make sure between welds that you clean where you're going to tie in. So that was the Curse of E again. I've already done that. Clean the end off real quick. I use this file like the way you would use a chipping hammer for flux. I, I like using a file. Uh, the chipping hammer, I, I have to hear it banging, uh, banging on metal all day long from the students, so I, I kind of try not to use it myself of it all possible. So here's just a straight drag again. And the breaker went on I me mean, one, one last time. So I went to fix that, came back. And I'm going to finish off this weld with uh, moving back and forth motion. Again, this is on quarter inch steel. So probably the thickest metal that this machine could handle. And the breaker went on one more time. But I'm done, so we'll get it, get it cleaned off, and that's what it looks like. So, not bad, not bad weld profile, and um, and you can tell like they all look, kind of look the same. It's not that much of a difference. So again, there's a lot you can do with this machine um, with a little practice, but that's really what it's going to take. Grab some scrap metal. Start laying some wells down before you make whatever you're going to make. And uh, in the next video, we'll start actually making something with it. But if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.